Uh, well, now we have the highlight of the show. We're joined by a great conservative champion with a nearly 90% lifetime ACU uh, voting record, which is hard to do uh, 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 at times, uh, but he does the right thing all the time. Uh, Doug Collins, Doug, uh, Congressman, thank you for being <laughs> with us. Oh, man, no, it's great to be with y'all. Thanks for having me. Uh, so uh, I can tell by the paneling that surrounds your head <laughs> that you are at work in Congress. Uh, how did, how did they decide to get back to work? I thought that they thought that it was too dangerous to go to work. Uh, it is a scary thought around here. Um, but I guess that Pelosi, after every, Speaker Pelosi every once in a while has to bring people back just to confirm whatever she's wanting to confirm. Uh, it's yeah. really ridiculous, though. We should be up here. We should be back on the front lines of this every day, working, doing committees, doing the things that we should be doing. And by not doing it, I think it just sends a terrible message to the country. Yeah, if you're not going to do the work, maybe uh, people like Nancy Pelosi shouldn't be getting paid. Yeah. Well, and we've been saying this for a long time. And what got me was, is what, two a week and a half ago, we came back and did this proxy voting. We discussed that in the first two weeks. That's not something you discuss two months and a half months in, because it's time for us to come back now. There's no reason for D.C. to be shut down like it is. So basically, walk us through this idea of the proxy voting, because it was uh, a common practice when mm -hmm. it was hard to get to Washington, D.C., before airplanes and such. And one of the reforms that Newt Gingrich put into place back in 1995, a long time ago, was to eliminate proxy voting because it's so abused by people in leadership. It was, and it, and it was, the interesting part here is a twofold. We always did it in the, um, it was up until 95 was in the committees. It was never on the floor. That was that's a big right. difference. And, but it was in the committees. And that's exactly where you talked about you, the, you know, the chairman had in his pocket. You've probably seen some of the old movies uh, that, you know, I've got four votes in my pocket. Well, that's what it is. They had four people that they could use uh, for proxy. Back then, there was no control over it. They didn't, they just had that vote and said, I'm going to vote how I need you to vote. And they went along with it. This one is where they are, uh, have added um, the, at least partially for, for floor votes, you've got to call ahead, you've got to say, I'm not coming. And then you got to give your vote to somebody in email. And they go through this, you know, this process so that nobody can, um, you know, supposedly change a vote. But again, what happens to get that vote there? That's a whole different issue as well. Well, and if you're if you're basically in the middle of a pandemic, if she could have proxy uh, votes uh, uh, with floor votes, right? In other words, they can actually make law, right? Yes. It's oh, a they big can. Step passing the house with Nancy Pelosi basically saying, and there's no way to verify it. Oh, I've got 30 people who've told me they want to vote this way. Um, you know, this is really, really, really problematic. And uh, and look, I think it, I think the proxy voting, which is basically sham voting uh, mm -hmm. in the House of Representatives, is akin to what the Democrats are trying to do with this mail in voting, which is I got no problem with somebody who, who can't physically get to a polling place voting by mail. I have a huge problem with the local version of Nancy Pelosi requesting and then picking up all these ballots, because I don't trust that the person's intent will be uh, executed on that ballot. Well, and we, we don't have to look far for this. And there's twofold things that's come across. Number one, we saw the 2018 election in California, where you had, in Orange County in particular, you had three uh, congressmen and women in that time went to bed with six or 7,000 vote leads, and then ended up five days later losing by 10,000 votes. You're talking about almost a 17,000 vote swing in some of hey, those hey, races. Congressman. How yep. can you name a Democrat who was leading on election night and by the morning they were no longer leading? Why does this only seem to happen to Republicans? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sort of a pattern developing here, isn't it? Um, and, but it's amazing. The media can't follow patterns. They try to follow patterns on the president. They try to follow patterns on everything else. But they can't follow that pattern because they know it's not what's happening. It's a ballot harvesting is exactly what was happening. They saw how much they needed and they went and got them. Um, but also, I will say that this is also the reason that we, the federalist, uh, the federalism idea of this election, what I've been fighting for the last year and a half, especially in Judiciary Committee, was this idea of this, in, it's not even an incremental approach anymore to federalizing elections. They're now outright saying it, 
basically, we're going to set the standards for elections. We're going to tell the states how to do it, which is in direct contradiction to how our laws are set up and our constitution is set up in this area. So this is why people need to be aware of this. If you don't want, uh, like from my perspective, I don't want California sort of running Georgia election law. This is the, that we got to be aware of. And proxy voting was just a, a simple, from their perspective, well, this is where we're going to do it. But it puts all the power in Speaker Pelosi's hands, just as she keeping us away puts it all in her hands. By us not being here, the Speaker, as you well know, gets to write everything in her office, talk to a few of her lieutenants, and then they just give it to everybody and then force everybody to do what she wants to do. And that's not the way this is supposed to work. Well, we're supposed to trust uh, our leaders, uh, Congressman Collins. Uh, the problem is, over the course of the last four years, most of the people who have been leading our intelligence uh, community offices or who populate the next rung of these jobs have done everything to destroy any public confidence a common sense, regular old American could have. And I'm speaking specifically over the cronyism and the, I think, illegality around General Michael Flynn and the Russian collusion and all these things. You've been a leading voice in pushing back on this uh, corruption. Uh, what is going to happen now? I mean, I know Mike Flynn's not going to go to jail, but is any person who perpetrated the crimes against him and the crimes against Trump going to go to jail? I, I would, if, frankly, from what we continue to see and what I have seen, I, I really do hope so. And I think Durham is out there doing it. But let's take for just a second, go backwards here. Flynn represents a milestone for many of us who've been fighting this battle tooth and nail for a long time. It is the first time that we actually were able to peel away because uh, uh, his attorney, Sidney Powell and the rest are able to peel away and get to the heart of what we knew was there. And that was the corruption at the core. And, and I'd like to call them a, you know, just they were a deputized band of a street gang, basically, that Comey and McCabe and Strzok and Page and the rest of them who wanted to get back at the president. What we didn't have a knowledge of is not only their internal discussions, but we didn't also have knowledge of the unmaskings and who was unmasking. And it went all the way, frankly, to the Oval Office. Think about this. Could you imagine the newspapers in this town and the TV networks across this country if there was a meeting in which uh, President Trump, uh, Vice President Pence and his uh, national security staff were talking about a Democrat from, a, from an incoming administration and unmasking them? It, they would be just all over the map with outrage. They're not even talking about it. They're trying to hide it. Why? Because the media knows that if they give in to this, then they have to admit they have been wrong in so many other areas of this, from criticizing me, Devin Nunez, and others, when we were actually saying, here's the transcripts we released. See what's happening here. They've denied it for so long. They bought the Democrat talking point on this that now uh, they can't go back and, and try to even save face because they have none to save. But this is important for the American people, not because of General Flynn, but because of what it could do to them. Okay, so uh, I'm not a lawyer. You're an eminent lawyer. I look at the situation and say, General Flynn should be able to sue somebody yes. um, for what they did. Does he have any ability to go after these people who clearly broke the law? Yep. You know, Andrew McCabe isn't at the FBI anymore. He's a private citizen. I hope yep. he never gets his pension. I hope he yep. goes to jail. Yep. Can Mike Flynn sue someone like that? How does he get recompense? It's going to be hard. And in, in all fairness, this is what happens when you act under the color of law. When you act as the government itself, you're, there's some immunity attached to that, unless you're doing it in a negligent and a willful way. And there's some issues that you can go there. I think that's why it's so important for this case to be resolved. I think Emmett Sullivan has, has put himself in uh, legal jeopardy himself. He's the judge in that case by trying to pay all parts of this. And now the appeals court has said, no, you're not going to be able to do that, uh, judge. You need to explain yourself. But when Durham and the others show forth on what we have seen in the, in the inspector general's report has shown just, you know, major gaps in how the FBI was doing their FISA issues and FISA reports. I, I think there is some opportunity here to hold these folks accountable. And if we don't hold them accountable, shame on us. Yeah, I, I can't uh, agree with you more, because if uh, they get away with doing this, Congressman, uh, I fear someone else will do it again. And it's always to Republicans. And, uh, you know, I keep saying this, that only Republicans seem to go to jail. And yeah. I mean that those who serve Republican presidents. And, yeah. you know, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And we've got to have some equity across party lines. Well, we've also got to have a, a system in which people do not believe that just because you're rich or powerful or you're in a higher position that you can get away with things. And I think we see we see that across the board sometimes and people don't understand. They don't understand the technicalities. They see folks, you know, even like you and I, I mean, I'm a trooper's kid from North Georgia. I mean, I've watched people 
you know, with get taken to jail for for the, for things all the time. Go back to Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton should have been charged. I mean, she could have worked out the plea deal or whatever, but she should have been charged for her classified information. I work in the Air Force. I'm still in the Air Force, and we go over it every year how to handle classified information, and it's not even a choice. It's a it's a strict liability offense. If you do it, you've done it. You're guilty. And again, she walks, and that's what happens. So we got to start holding accountable. Give our, uh, we have a couple minutes left of your time. Give our viewers an insight into what uh, Congress is doing this week. Right now, it's, it's interesting because we do have the FISA bill, supposedly the one that came back from the Senate we were going to take up. It's running into some issues, uh, and I think the president's rightly concerned about making sure that we fix FISA. Uh, I don't think the FBI director has done enough in that regard. Chris Ray and I, we've talked about this. There's more that can be done. So it looks like we may, this bill may not come up, and I would hope it wouldn't. We need to work on it more so that we can assure not just this president, but any future president, this would not happen to them again, or any American citizen, it wouldn't happen. Yeah, or to any them. American, that's right. Yeah, exactly. It's not just the president, because you talk pa pa Papadopoulos, Page, the rest. And um, then where I think we have just some more technical fixes on the PPP program, which has been a success. We just need to make it easier for our businesses to make sure they get their money and how they can understand how they are required, not you know what they can pay back, what they don't have to pay back, and how the rules uh, apply there. But for unfortunately, Matt, and I want to say this: this is ridiculous. We're up here. The, the Speaker Pelosi has flown everybody back to D.C. or drove or however they get here for nothing in the essence of a, of a, of a productive session. There's there's the committee hearings that could be happening. We're not. We're not. Do, we've not done NDAA yet. We've not done transportation. We've not done any appropriations bills. We're just in this mode right now of, I believe she is taking the political opportunity of this pandemic to keep her members out from DC so that some of her conserv more conservative, there's not conservatives over there, but more conservative members who at least portray themselves back in their district don't have to be associated with AOC and Tlaib and the rest of them. Yeah, they don't have to there. take votes. There's 31 Democrats in the House playing a little bit of a game of shells on the fact that they're supposedly moderate. Yep. Uh, many of them said they wouldn't vote for Nancy Pelosi, and then <laughs> they did vote for her to be speaker. And they're doing everything they can. We used to say in the old days, they vote socialist or vote liberal, and they press release conservative. And for yep. these 31, for, for these 31 uh, Democrats, I feel a little sorry for them because I don't think they're going to get away with it, not no. with everything that's been exposed. You know, their press, their comms directors have to be pretzels after the end of <laughs> these votes, <laughs> twisting themselves to figure this one out. That's for sure. Well, that's what's good when you work for Doug Collins is you don't have to turn yourself into a pretzel. People know what you think. Uh, the people who work for you know know what you think. The people you represent know what you think. We know what you think. We appreciate your leadership. Uh, thank God that you were uh, the ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, or history could have taken a, a wicked turn. So thank you for everything you've done, uh, and keep keep up the fight up there in the House of Representatives. Uh, Doug Collins, uh, almost a 90% lifetime ACU uh, rating. We appreciate you being with us.